is new market entrance. That is the second force. New market entrance. Now, these are not the traditional competitors. We are running a business, maybe an M-Pesa business, and other uh, people have realized that that business is generating a lot of money. So what they do, they also start other businesses. Those are new market entrants. They are going to compromise our competitive advantage because some of our customers may move to their organization. So it is a force that shapes the fate of the farm. The farm must be aware of new entrants because these people are going to take a share of the organization's profit. Then we must be aware of substitute products. Products and services. The substitute products and services are also uh, a threat to our competitive advantage. Uh, in, in, in just about every industry, there are substitutes that your customers might use in, uh, if your prices become too high. Those substitute products. A good example is the Everready company. It was doing so well until these other companies came up. The Tiger brand of, of batteries. Then came the Chinese. The Chinese and their technology. Uh, the rechargeable uh, spotlights. So those are new, uh, those are substitute products and services. So we must be aware of this in the market it's because they shape the fate of the business. If those products are there, then we'll not be able to sell much. And when we don't sell much, that means we are having a problem of competitive advantage. Uh, uh, new businesses or businesses create all sorts of substitute products. Now we must also think about customers. That is another competitive force. It is shaping the business. A profitable company depends in a large measure on its ability to attract and retain customers. Our competitive advantage fully relies on our capability. Our here, I mean organization. Our capability to attract customers, new customers that is, and retain the existing customers. If an organization cannot be able to do that, then it is a force that is going to compromise the competitive advantage. If customers are moving to other organizations or customers are not satisfied, so they are buying from other organizations, maybe because our prices are so high, that is a force. Then we have the other force, number five, talking about suppliers. Suppliers. In every organization, we talk about suppliers. The, be, without suppliers, there can be no organization. And we are told the market power of suppliers can have a significant impact, impact on the organization's profits, especially when the organization cannot raise prices as fast as the suppliers. Uh, the more different suppliers a farm has, the greater control it can exercise over suppliers in terms of price, quality, and delivery schedule. The suppliers will really dictate our competitive advantage. If we cannot manage the supplier activities well, then that means we cannot be able to have a competitive advantage. The suppliers are not supposed to drive our prices. We are, we are supposed to drive the suppliers. That is what we call another force. So these five forces, uh, the five forces that are defined by Porter, now takes us to what we call the strategies. Now, which strategies will be used by the organization to overcome the five forces. That is a very key area in the CASNEB MIS paper. Because you can be told over an organization and then you're asked required, what strategies can they be able to use to achieve their goals? Achieving their goals is where we talk about competitive advantage. So Porter takes us to another level and we talk about information system strategies for dealing with competitive forces. Yeah.